Hey my dear data friends, it's Nikola from Data Mozart. Have you ever wondered what makes Power BI so fast and powerful when it comes to performance? So powerful that it performs complex calculations over millions, sometimes even billions of rows in a blink of an eye. In this video, we will dig deep to discover what is under the hood of Power BI, how your data is being stored, compressed, queried and finally brought back to your report. After that, you will get a better understanding of the hard work happening in the background and appreciate the importance of creating an optimal data model in order to get maximum performance from the Power BI engine. Stay tuned as we are preparing to make music from data. Let's start with a simple question. What is a worthy pack? Before we come to answer this question, we should mark the line between the row store versus columnar databases. Vertipack is a columnar database. As you can see in this illustration, columnar databases stores and compresses data in a whole different way compared to traditional row store databases. Columnar databases are usually implemented in large analytical systems, as they are optimized for vertical data scanning which means that every column has its own structure and is physically separated from other columns. Another important distinction in order to understand what is VertiPack is to understand the difference between Formula Engine and Storage Engine. As you can notice in this illustration taken from the book The Definitive Guide to DEX from Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari, Formula Engine accepts the request, processes it, generates the query plan and finally executes it. Storage Engine pulls the data out of tabular model to satisfy the request issued within the query generated by the Formula Engine. Storage Engine works in two different ways in order to retrieve requested data. VertiPack keeps the snapshot of the data in memory, and this data snapshot can be refreshed from time to time from the original data source. On the other hand, Direct Query doesn't store any data, it just forwards the query straight to the data source for every single request. We will also talk about direct query in this video but without going deep into details. Formula Engine represents the brain of Power BI. As I already mentioned, Formula Engine accepts the query and since it's able to understand DEX and MDX by the way, it translates DEX into a specific query plan and that query plan consists of physical operations that need to be executed in order to get results back. Those physical operations can be joins between multiple tables, uh, filtering conditions or aggregations. It's important to keep in mind that Formula Engine works in a single threaded way, which means that requests to Storage Engine are always being sent sequentially. So let's go and reiterate through the whole process which occurs within the Formula Engine. The first step is that Formula Engine accepts the request, then it goes and processes the request. Next in the line is to generate the plan for this request and finally it executes the generated query. Once the query been generated and executed by the formula engine, the storage engine comes into the scene. Since it physically goes through the data stored within the tabular model, if you use VertiPack, or goes directly to a different data source, like SQL Server for example, if direct query storage mode is in place, we can think of Storage Engine as the muscles of Power BI. When it comes to specifying the Storage Engine for the table, there are three possible options to choose from. Import mode, Direct Query mode and Dual mode. As opposed to Formula Engine that doesn't support parallelism, Storage Engine can work asynchronously. Let's first briefly introduce Import mode, which is the most common way to store the data when working with Power BI. That said, import mode is based on VertiPack. Table data is being stored in memory as a snapshot and this snapshot of data can be refreshed periodically. When you are using direct query mode, data is being retrieved from the data source at the query time. That means data resides in its original source before, during and after the query execution. Finally, dual mode represents a simple combination of the previous two options of import mode and direct query mode. Data from the table is being loaded into memory, but at the query time it can be also retrieved directly from the source. 
Now as we drawn a big picture previously, let me explain in more details what Vertipack does in the background to boost performance of our Power BI reports. When we choose import mode for our Power BI tables, Vertipack will perform the following actions. First it will read the data source and transform the data into a columnar structure. Then it will encode and compress data within each of the columns. After that it will establish dictionary and index for each of the columns. Then it will prepare and establish relationships. And finally it will compute all calculated columns and calculated tables and compress them. As you may recall from the previous part of this video, two main characteristics of Vertipack are that Vertipack is a columnar in-memory database. So that means that Vertipack applies different types of compression to each of the columns independently, choosing the optimal compression algorithm based on the values in that specific column. Compression is being achieved by encoding the values within the column. But before we go deeper into a detailed overview of different encoding techniques, just keep in mind that this architecture is not exclusively related to Power BI. In the background is a tabular model, which also works under the hood of Analysis Services Tabular and Excel Power Pivot. Let's now examine the coding types which Vertipack applies in order to compress the data. So first one is a value encoding, then hash encoding or dictionary encoding, and finally run length encoding or RLE abbreviated. Now we will go into more details regarding each of these encoding types. The first one is value encoding and this is the most desirable encoding types, type since it works exclusively with integers and therefore requires less memory than for example when working with text values. How this looks in reality? Let's say we have a column containing a number of phone calls per day and the value in this column varies from 4000 to 5000. What the Vertipack would do is to find the minimum value in this range, which is 4000 in our example, and set this minimum value as a starting point. Then it will calculate the difference between this value and all the other values in the column, storing this difference as a new value. At first glance, if you look at our example, 3 bits uh, of saving per one value might not look like a significant saving. But if you multiply this by millions or even billions of rows, I think you will appreciate the amount of memory saved using value encoding type. Hash encoding is probably the most used compression type by a Vertipack. Uh, using hash encoding, Vertipack creates a dictionary of, of distinct values within one column and afterward replaces real values with index values from the dictionary. As you may notice in this illustration, Vertipack identifies distinct values within the subjects column, built a dictionary by assigning indexes to those values and finally stored index values as pointers to real values. I assume you are aware that integer values require way less memory space than text, so basically that's the logic behind this type of data compression. Additionally, by being able to build dictionary for literally any data type, Vertipack is practically data type independent. And this brings us to another key takeaway. Uh, no matter if your column is of text, uh, big integer or float data type, from Vertipack perspective it's all the same. It needs to create a dictionary for each of those columns, which implies that all these columns will provide the same performance both in terms of speed and memory space allocated. Of course, if we assume that there is no big difference between dictionary sizes between those columns. So it's a myth that the data type of the column affects its size within the data model. On the opposite, number of distinct values within the column, which is known as cardinality, mostly influences column memory consumption. Third algorithm, run length encoding, creates kind of a mapping table containing ranges of repeating values and that way avoiding to store every single repeated value separately. Again, taking a look at example will help to better understand this concept. In real life, Vertipack doesn't store these start values because it can quickly calculate where the next node begins by summing previous count values. 
However, as powerful as it might look at first glance, a run length decoding algorithm is highly dependent on the ordering within the column. If the data is stored the way you see in our example, so we have a lot of repeating values in uh, buckets, run length decoding will perform great. However, if your data buckets are smaller and rotate more frequently, then a run length encoding would not be an optimal solution. One more thing to keep in mind regarding run length encoding. Uh, in reality, VertiPack uh, will first perform hash encoding and create a dictionary of the subjects and then apply run length algorithm. So the final logic in its most simplified way, of course, would be something like this. So run length encoding occurs after hash encoding. In those scenarios when VertiPack thinks that it makes sense to additionally compress the data. So when data is ordered in that way, that run length encoding would achieve better compression than using hash algorithm solely. So let me just briefly iterate through the process of data compression for a specific column or let's call this part how VertiPack thinks. So first step is that VertiPack will scan sample of rows from the column and if the column data type is not an integer, it will look no further and use hash encoding. If the column is of integer data type, some additional parameters are being evaluated. If the numbers in this sample linearly increase, VertiPack will assume that it is probably a primary key column and it will choose value encoding for this column. When it evaluates value ra a range of values within the column, if the numbers in the column are reasonably close to each other, so number range is not very wide, like in our example uh, with phone calls for 4,000 to 5,000, VertiPack will use value encoding. On the contrary, when values fluctuate significantly within the range, for example between 1,000 and 1 million, then value encoding doesn't make sense and VertiPack will apply the hash algorithm. However, and this is important, no matter how smart VertiPack is, it can also make some bad decisions based on incorrect assumptions. Therefore, sometimes it can happen that VertiPack makes a decision about which algorithm to use based on the sample data, but then some outlier pops up and VertiPack needs to re-encode the column from scratch. Let's use our previous example for the number of phone calls. And imagine that VertiPack scanned the sample and choose to apply value encoding. Then, after processing 10 million rows, all of a sudden it found 500,000 value. It can be an error or whatever. Now VertiPack will reevaluate the choice and it can decide to re-encode the column using the hash algorithm instead of value algorithm. Obviously, that would impact the whole process in terms of time needed for reprocessing. Finally, here is the list of parameters in order of their importance that VertiPack considers when choosing which uh, algorithm to apply. First and most important one is the number of distinct values in the column, which is known as cardinality. Then data distribution in the column, which means that column with many repeating values can be better compressed than one containing frequently changing values, because as you saw, run length encoding algorithm can be applied on top of hash algorithm. Next is number of rows in the table and finally column data type which as we already said impacts only dictionary size. That's all folks. If you enjoyed this video please click on that like button down below. Even better you can subscribe to Data Monster channel and enjoy more cool Power BI and data videos.